Hello and welcome back to Chillers and Thrillers. I am your host, M, and in this podcast, I read true stories of people's encounters with the supernatural. No comedy, skepticism, or gore, only 100% true spooky tales. Growing up in a Latin family, one of the main characters of our urban legends is the woman in white, or as we say in Brazil, a mulher em branco. I thought this was a local legend until as a child I caught a rerun of Unsolved Mysteries where host Robert Stack described the urban legend of Resurrection Mary, the ghost of a young woman in a white dress who haunts the streets near Resurrection Cemetery in Chicago. It turns out almost every country around the world and cities within those countries have their own stories of a woman in white. Popular locations include Latin America, the Philippines, the United States, and England. Each place has their own take on the woman in white, but at the core is a woman who has experienced a tragic or sudden death, either accidentally or at the hands of someone else. The woman then haunts the area of her death or of her burial. The tale is so popular that Wikipedia considers the woman in white to be a type of paranormal entity, in the same vein as a poltergeist or demonic possession. If your country or town has your version of the woman in white, I would love to hear about it. Please let me know either on the Chillers and Thrillers YouTube channel, Instagram page, or through email. But for now, get comfortable, turn down the lights, and listen in. The Woman in White Submitted by Aztexan512. From the ages 5 to about 15, I used to spend my summers at my aunt's house in Mexico. On her property was another smaller house. It was two bedrooms, a kitchenette, and a living room area. The family that lived in that house was a mom, dad, and two boys about my age. I was about 11 or 12 at the time. I knew that the house was the second one that was built as it replaced a previous house that had burned down before I was born. My aunt's house had windows on one side of the house. Each room had at least two to three windows from mid wall to the ceiling. The bed was next to the windows in the room that I was in and the majorities of the summers we slept with the top windows opened. The windows opened out instead of up. One night as I slept, I was awakened by the sounds of a woman crying and pleading to be allowed in. I opened my eyes and could see the neighbor mom, dressed in white, begging to be let into the house. Now, I knew that dad was a drunk and could be mean when he was drunk. I remember many times the boys and mom would come to my aunt's house in the middle of the night, so I just thought it was her and that he had locked her out of the house. She continued to yell out and I continued to look at her. That's when I realized that it wasn't the mother. This woman had long white hair. She was dressed in white. She's at the door, but her dress is flowing. I quickly sit up to get a better look. That's when she stops and turns to look at me. Even though she's about 50 yards away, I can see her face and now I'm certain That's not the mother. She starts gliding towards me. I close my eyes and lay down on my side. I open my eyes and she's past the stone wall. I shut my eyes again. It seems like I had my eyes closed forever. I open my eyes and she's right in front of me. There's blackness where her eyes should be. Her white hair is flowing around her. She screams, and I start to scream. The next thing I know, my cousin is waking me up for breakfast. I come into the kitchen and take the empty seat at the table. My aunt then asks me if I'm okay or if I'm homesick and if I want to go home. It has only been a week and I look forward to these summers. I told her no, and she asked, Are you sure? You were crying last night. I told her it wasn't me that was crying, but the mom next door. My cousins look at each other, then look at my aunt. Then they look back at me, and my aunt says, So you saw her? That's when I remembered the woman in white. 
I come to find out that they have all seen this woman at least once. The story was that the woman in white was the previous mom that lived in the house that had burned down. Much like the family that lived there now, it was a family of four. A father, a mother, and two boys. And much like the family now, the father was a mean and vengeful drunk. One night, before he went on a drinking binge, they fought about him going and drinking their funds away. She tells him that if he leaves to go drinking, she'll take the boys and leave him. He leaves. She packs up her things and is ready to leave, but decides to go after him instead. A couple of hours later, he returns to what he thinks is an empty house. He gets angry and starts to burn the house down. He goes to a nearby tree and passes out. She comes to the house, it's on fire when she runs to the door. She's banging on the door to be allowed in. Unknown to the father, the house was not empty. The children were still there. Neighbors say they could hear the woman's cries for several blocks. After the fire was extinguished and it was confirmed that the children had passed, the woman cries and weeps again. And the story went that she died of a broken heart by the burned remains of the house. My aunt tells me that the family that lives there now is the sixth family that has lived in that house. And it's the first time in years that the ghost woman has appeared. She had appeared frequently in the past when the previous families that lived in the new house, those didn't stay long. But the current family was different than the previous one because it was the same as her family, a mother, a father, and two boys. And they were moving out later that summer and they all believed that's why she appeared again. I went back to my aunt's house during the summers until I turned 15, and I never saw her again, but I will never forget her wails or her soulless eyes. The Woman on the Bridge, submitted by user Miyup. I have a story from my grandpa who is Filipino. He used to live in San Pablo. Back then, he had to walk to work and part of his route went over a bridge. The bridge is still there today. One night, he had to stay at work pretty late, so it was close to midnight when he finally started walking home. When he got to the bridge, he saw a woman in a white dress at the other end, on the same side of the street as him. For some reason, he felt creeped out, but he didn't want the lady to think he was being a wuss, so he kept walking ahead, trying to not look directly at her. They met in the middle of the bridge. As he was about to pass her, he glanced at her face and saw nothing. Where her face should have been, it was just blank. Grandpa kept it together until he reached the end of the bridge, then booked it all the way home. The Cemetery, submitted by user Corey Jano. As an avid paranormal enthusiast, I often wonder why many personal experiences involve a lady in white. Often as a child, I would read many stories and books about the paranormal, which would usually end up having some kind of lady in white involved in one of the stories. After a while, I would begin to dismiss these stories and just chalk it up to folklore. Until, that is, I witnessed my own lady in white. In high school, I was one of the strange and unusual kids. I wore a lot of black, eyeliner, fishnet sleeves, dog collar, and long hair. I listened to metal and goth music and even attempted witchcraft rituals occasionally. I also ran around with a group of kids who were just as strange and unusual. One of our favorite pastimes was gathering together at one of the oldest cemeteries on the outer edge of our town, called Rose Lawn. We would meet at our friend Jessica's house and hang around smoking cigarettes until our party was complete and the sun had been long gone before we would make our drive down the road to Roselawn. There we would walk the headstones admiring the beauty of the grounds and avoiding a statue we called the Jeebus. It was a statue of, you guessed it, Jesus Christ. The sculptor had messed up a bit and gave him wonky eyes that both looked at you and not at you at the same time while following you around everywhere you walked. We only approached the statue if we felt like feeling uneasy for a moment. Most of all though, 
we played hide and seek. This night, I had brought my new girlfriend with me. She was a very pretty girl who hung out with the group we called the Preps most of the time. She was an athletic trainer who wore her letter jacket everywhere. How she got mixed up with the strange and unusual group such as mine is beyond my understanding, but she was digging me and I was digging her. We started the evening per usual, and after some walks among the tombstones, we decided that having a newbie around, we should play our game of hide and seek. My girlfriend and I were the seekers. We counted to whatever predetermined number it was and set out to seek. It was a quiet, warm night, no wind, no light other than the moon, and no sound which would make it super easy to identify runners. Rows and rows of headstones we walked through, keeping a weary eye for anything other than bouquets of flowers and other items of remembrance. What seemed like an eternity had passed and we had not found one person. As we walked past a tall shrubbery wall, we were about to give up and admit defeat. When on the other side of the wall, we heard footsteps in the grass. We stopped dead in our track. So did the footsteps. I whispered to my girlfriend, instructing her to run to one end of the shrubbery while I run to the other end and catch whoever it was. At that moment, whoever was on the other side seemed to let out a long, <sighs> exasperated, heavy sigh. We took off like bats running out of hell, running to each end of the bushes. As we came around our respective ends, we saw no one other than each other, staring blankly at each other. No one was there. No one had run. No one in sight in either direction. As expected, we were a little unnerved, but shrugged it off, as it's easier to deal with creepiness when it's a shared experience. So after the normal, what was that? We decided to continue our search. We began walking down the same road that ran parallel to the shrubbery wall as I explained to her that the section coming up is where all the children were laid to rest. When we got there, we paused for a moment to be respectful to the sleeping babes that lied under their tiny headstones and plaques. As I looked up in the distance, there was a family plot with a large statue of an angel with outstretched wings and a somber stance. Next to the statue, I saw a figure of someone standing next to it in a long, flowing, light-colored dress. Look, there's Jessica, I told my girlfriend, who looked up and agreed. The others must be hanging with her around that statue. Jessica was known to love the statue and would often come to Roselawn and sit next to it when she needed time to be alone. We began to walk towards the family plot. Every so often, I would look up from trying not to stumble on headstones or tree roots to make sure she was still there and that they hadn't made a run for it. The closer we got, she still stood there, never moving. When we made it about 20 feet from the statue, I looked up and she was gone. No one was around and it was a plain view left and right of the statue. No one was walking or running away. The only thing behind the statue was a wooded fence line that was the border to a scout camp. Bewildered, we decided that everyone sucks and that we should go back to my car and wait for the others to give up or quit playing games. Safe inside my car, we waited for about 10 minutes for anyone to appear before we decided that it was a great time to leave. As we were about to leave, there was a loud bang on my window, followed by a blood-curling scream. It was my friend Joy. We got out of the car and I asked where the heck they had been. They responded saying that they didn't even hide to begin with, that they all had been hanging around with the Jesus statue. I told them that we saw Jessica by the angel and that they're lying. They denied ever even being on that end of the cemetery. I looked over at Jessica to see if she would corroborate the story and realized that she was wearing a black dress that night. In fact, all of us were in black. I let them know about the female figure in a white dress by the angel. We decided to call it a night and go home. Some time later, I like to say some months later, Rose Lawn was brought up at the dinner table with my family. I told my dad that I had been doing some hanging around with friends there. 
Of course, he chastised me, being the God-fearing Christian upstanding citizen of our community that he was. He then proceeded to tell me a story about when he was a young Boy Scout on an overnight camping trip. He told me that his troop's campsite was right next to the Rose Lawn border fence, right behind the angel statue. He told me that in the middle of the night, he had the urge to relieve himself. He opened his tent, stepped out, stood facing the fence, and when he looked up, he saw a woman dressed in a long white dress standing in Rose Lawn, facing away from him, basically facing the same way she was facing when I saw her from the other side. And then she vanished before his eyes. Needless to say, every hair on my body was standing on end. I could feel a lump in my throat when I was finally able to swallow. I recalled my story of mistaking the lady in white for my friend Jessica. He kind of looked a little shaken by it and it was never brought up again until I decided to share the story. The Woman on the Road Submitted by user S underscore Craig. My grandfather was in the Air Force, and one night he was driving, and he saw a woman standing on the side of the road in a long white dress at about 2 a.m. He circled back to ask if she needed help, and she was nowhere to be seen. He searched for her for about an hour before giving up and deciding to leave it alone. When he decided to go on his way, he had a strong feeling that he needed to switch lanes. He was on the road alone in the middle of the night, so he had no idea why, but he just did. And just ahead on the road, there was a broken down truck with no hazards on that he would have hit and probably been killed by if he stayed in the lane he had been in. To this day, he's convinced the woman was trying to warn him, like an omen or an angel. Late Night Encounter with a Girl in a White Dress Submitted by user Diablo69 This happened about two years ago. I had just come back from a vacation outside my city. My bus dropped me at the station at approximately 1.30 in the morning. I got into the main road and started looking for a cab to go home. There was no cab or any person in sight. I was standing for about five to eight minutes, looking at both sides of the roads, trying to find a cab. And on my left, I saw a girl in a white sari, a traditional dress for women in my country, standing about 50 feet away from me under a lamp post. My heart immediately started pounding. I looked the other way and started praying. A few moments later, I hear her saying, Hey, sir, can you do me a favor? I was shaking. I turned at her and she was about four feet away from me. I immediately took two steps back. She smiled and said, are you afraid of me? I said, it's almost 2 a.m. and there's a girl in a white sari standing in front of me at a lone place like this. Yes, I'm a bit afraid. I'm a bit afraid. She chuckled and said, don't be afraid. I'm the one afraid, actually. It's really late, and I'm alone here, and I need to go home. But I want someone to accompany me. Would you please come with me? My home is not far from here. Just to let everyone know, in my country, it is not safe for any woman to be out alone at night. But I was scared. I didn't want to leave a young girl alone there. So I agreed to give her company, but asked her to keep distance from me. She chuckled and said, okay. I really didn't want to talk or make eye contact with her, so I didn't even ask her why she was alone there at night at this time. I didn't know where we were going. I just followed her, walking beside her, keeping distance. She also didn't say a word the whole time, which was really eerie to me. After walking for about 15 minutes, she stops in front of a steel gate, which was on our right. She said with a happy face, my home is just a few steps from here. You don't need to make more trouble. I can take care from here. Thank you for helping me. You're a good person. Then she turned her back and started walking. I thought my job is done and I turned to the opposite direction and started walking back. 
But out of curiosity, after taking a few steps, I turned my head to see where she was going, and she was gone. No girl in sight. I turned back and came back in front of the gate and looked around. She was gone. I looked at the gate, and it had a padlock in it. There's no way anyone could unlock it, get in, lock it from the outside in such a short amount of time. It's not possible. At least not for a human. I still didn't know what that gate was for. I looked up and saw a sign over the gate. It said, X Cemetery. I realized everything that just happened to me. I started running. I saw a mosque on site and started running towards it. There's always a mosque near a cemetery in my country. I rushed into the mosque, which obviously was noisy, and the Amman of the mosque woke up and came with a baton, thinking I was a thief. He asked me what had happened, and I explained everything to him. He understood and told me the story of the girl. Seven years ago, a girl had passed away on that street due to a violent incident. People had found her under the lamppost I was talking about earlier. No one had identified her, and no one had come to claim her body, so no complaint was filed at the police. Since no one claimed her body, the locals buried her in the cemetery I had walked her to, and since then, a lot of people, especially young men, have had interactions with her. Some hostile, some peaceful. I would like to think mine was peaceful. The Woman in White on the Queen Mary Submitted by user Minky When I was a kid, my dad and I used to go to the Queen Mary in Long Beach, California. You could walk around and explore the ship, which was always very exciting to me. There had been rumors for years about hauntings on the ship which eventually led them to hosting a Halloween haunt starting in the early 2000s. This story, however, happened in the mid-90s. My dad and I had been walking around down below in what was called Shaft Alley, a series of gangways located down in the boiler room. Each gangway bridges the right and left side ship, providing a single direct path from one end to the other. As you walk across, you can look down and see all the ship's machinery down below. While we were walking, we noticed a small, stout, elderly woman dressed all in white, walking towards us. I'll never forget her face. I was struck by her expression, as she had a look of confused terror as she locked eyes on us and slowly staggered in our direction, careful in her steps. She stopped in front of us and, in a soft British accent, asked my dad, Excuse me, sir. Could you please tell me the way out of here? We were a bit taken aback by her question because the exit sign was directly behind us, about 20 feet away. My dad told her, Sure, just walk straight back this way, and pointed to the exit at the end of the gangway. She then looked over, fixed her eyes on me, and said thank you. Not breaking eye contact, she passed us on that narrow path and started making her way slowly towards the exit. We took a few steps in the opposite direction, then, struck by how strange the interaction was, looked at each other, then immediately looked back. She was gone. Now keep in mind, the exit was about 20 feet away. She was moving at a slow pace and we could not have had our backs turned for more than a few seconds. The gangway is made of a heavy metal grating, so if she had run, we would have heard her footsteps pounding towards the exit. There was no place for her to turn. My dad, who is usually skeptical about ghosts and spirits, is still, to this day, perplexed at what we saw. The White Lady of Burger King, submitted by user Seaman710. For a while, things had calmed down in my life with the supernatural, but as the last couple of years, all kinds of bizarre events are happening. I thought some would make great stories to share with you, 
but I'm starting with an ongoing saga of what we have dubbed the White Lady at my Burger King. I've worked for the company for a year now, and both locations I have been at were haunted. While there's not much story to the first store I was at, what I've experienced on the night shift, along with others at my current stores, is something straight from a horror movie. It started simple enough. One night, while I was manning the front counter, I noticed a young woman in her 20s waving to get my attention. She had what I'd best described as a formal white gown on from the flapper days and long blonde hair. I explained I'd be right with her and turned away for less than a second. In the time I'd taken to turn back around, she was gone. I assumed I was just exhausted and wrote it off until a month later. My coworkers and I were discussing ghosts and while asking if a friend believed in them, she mentioned she'd seen one at work. When I asked the story, I'll give you one guess as to the specter she described. That's right, the same lady, the same wave, even standing in the same place. It really creeped us out, but we didn't think much of it. Apparently, the woman knew we'd seen her because that's when the haunting began in earnest. It started as little things. To this day, I see her in the lobby doing various things, whether it be waving me down again, sitting in a booth staring out the window, or dancing as if she's at the most elegant one-person ball I had ever seen. Other people claimed to see her too, including one employee who I'd never seen so spooked in my life. Overall, however, she seemed to keep to herself, so we let her be. About a month after her frequent appearances, things started to become less Casper and more poltergeist. One night, after I had clocked out and went home, one of the of my employees was waiting for a ride, and she swore to me as she was walking around, something followed her. Loud, heavy footsteps that she said made her blood run cold. I found this a little eerie, but thought nothing of it, even after she quit, no longer wishing to work the night shift. Then came my disturbing experience. At about 11.55, only five minutes until closing, I was taking orders. I had told the current car that I didn't have a specific item they wanted. What I was greeted by was the most blood-curdling scream I have ever heard in my life. Like the sound of a woman in a horror movie just moments before being taken out by some man in a mask. I threw off my headset, thinking it was just someone in the car. And as the car, who didn't want the food, drove off, I noticed distinctly that there was only one passenger in that car, a man. Understandably, I was visibly shaken and thanked God that I never got another car before I was able to take off for the night. After that, her appearances became more frequent. My general manager was skeptical, but becoming less so with every team member that seemed to come forward having heard a strange sound or seemingly seen someone who just wasn't there. Fast forward to last night. We had already closed the dining room for the night and I was cleaning when clear as day, I heard her for the first time. Excuse me, sir, came a woman's loud voice. I turned around, but though there were two women there, both were on their phones finishing their meals. Neither had any idea what I was talking about. Then tonight came what I call the escalation. I came into work to my general manager telling me, okay, I think I believe you about the ghost. I asked what happened, and according to her, both managers that morning, while the store was completely empty, swore up and down that they heard someone shout the assistant manager's name. After a thorough search, they found absolutely no one in the store, which apparently spooked her out. She had previously written it off having worked the night shift and not seen a thing. Then, tonight, as we were doing our usual work, my coworker turned to me and asked if I could hear someone crying. At first I was too busy to notice, but before long, 
I heard sobbing. Again, a woman's. I stood there, dumbstruck, and asked another coworker who heard the same thing. Our only female coworker was standing right beside me straight-faced and handing out food in the drive-thru. It continued for a good five minutes. Supposedly, our Burger King is built near what was once an old cemetery, if my older coworker is to be believed. But honestly, none of us know where to begin to figure out who the white lady is, and most are too afraid of finding out to call up a paranormal team. I only hope she is as friendly as she first appeared, and her creepier interactions are indeed harmless. The Woman at the Intersection, submitted by user Stealthy Sheep. This is a story my dad told me about 10 to 15 years ago. In the five mile radius by our house, there is a certain intersection where a lot of car accidents have happened. Unfortunately, some of these instances were fatal. My dad worked the later shift at a nearby company, typically from 3 p.m. to 12.30 a.m. To get to work every day, he has to drive past this intersection. And one day, when he was coming home after midnight, he stopped at the red light and noticed something odd. There was a woman in a white gown standing next to a bush, just standing there by herself with her face down. The light turned green, so he kept going and figured it was just a random occurrence. But the next night, he saw her standing there again. And the night after that, and the night after that, and the night after that. At this point, he hadn't told anyone about it, but he was starting to get freaked out and talk to my mom. My mom, of course, freaks out too and puts a religious symbol in his car. After she did that, he drove by that intersection the next night and never saw her again. Now we all have religious symbols in our car and thankfully, I've never seen anything like that. And that's all for this episode. Thank you so much for listening. If you'd like to support the podcast, please leave me a rating or review, or you can join the YouTube channel as well. Until next time, I hope all you ghouls and ghosts stay safe. And as always, I would love to hear from you. So you can drop me a line at chillersandthrillers at gmail.com.